All right, so tonight we're going over what you see here, player positions, roles. Um, three different formations, our main one, and then we'll cover two others, set pieces and game analyzing. So we'll go ahead and go through the next slide. All right, so we're going to start with the positions. It's going to be a document you've seen before, but we're going to go over it again just to make sure we understand. And then we'll do formations, set pieces, and then we're going to watch and talk about a game together. It is a World Cup match, but it's from 2018. All right, so let's go over the positions really quick. Our first one is the goalkeeper. Our goalkeeper isn't here. Oh, we, no, he's not correct. Um, but near party, keep the ball out of the goal, organize the defenders. Um, just like I tell my center backs, my goalie needs to be talking, organizing, communicating a lot. I'm um, attacking, they help build up the attack by punting the ball into the attack. And they're the first line of attack because when we get the ball back in our possession, they're the first person to give it out. Our next ones are the two and three outside backs. So my outside backs, basically if you drew a line from the other team to 18, all the way down to ours here, all the way down to here, that is your area. So this entire side right here is all yours to run. Um, they defend wide attacking players, defensive cover for the center backs in the 7 and 11. So remember, if my uh, 11 is up here, who should be right behind them? The three, and if the seven's up here, who should be right behind? Two. Two, two for the drop option. So if you're going to play outside back, do you think you have to be pretty thick? Yeah. Yes. Yes, very thick, because you're running the entire field, and they provide bounce defensively when the ball is on the opposite side. What that means is if the ball is over here and the two is marking it, the three just shifts a little bit, but should they just fall asleep? No. No, no. no. so you got to stay plugged in. Um, Attacking, they spread out while building up, so if my midfielders have the ball, they should be making the runs to get passes wide. Um, they're good in 1v1 situations. They can pass it over forward and they support the attack by staying connected with the wingers and move up and down. Any questions? Yeah. You forgot to put in there that they do the throw-ins. They also do the throw-ins, always, yes. But anything else? Yeah. All right, next. Center backs four and five. Defensively, they read the game to intercept long and through passes. That is why I know in this picture they are next to each other, but in the game, ideally, you're like this or like this. Because if they send a long ball, I always want one person just a little bit further back just in case. Does this make sense to us? Beautiful. Um, they defend the opponent's central forward. So my outside backs have this area on the outside, my center backs have this area. You'd probably stop about here. I wouldn't imagine you going further than this. All the way back to here in the middle. That's where the center backs get to go. Um, they provide defensive cover for the outside backs. So when the three steps to the ball, we do our pressure cover bounce and they shift with the outside backs. Um, as a coach on the field, to organize defensively and direct other team members on defense. So if you're playing center back, and if you are quiet, you will not stay at center back very long. Okay. I played center back and I was told if I ever stop talking, I'm not doing my job. So just like the goalie, these two right here are the only other people that can see the entire field and tell people what to do. So if you're playing here, you need to be loud and helping organize your teammates and tell them where to go. Um, protect the ball and steal the ball. They're good in 1v1 situations, especially down the middle. Do you think it's important they don't dive? <laughs> yes, if you're a center back, you really cannot dive and you got to stay in front of the ball. And then attacking. Great passing options to support the attack, and they are able to put their balls forward. Next should be the six. Yes, defensive midfielder. That is this friend right here. Um, defensively protect the ball and steal the ball. They work with the other midfielders to make it compact and keep it compact. So they'll stay kind of in the middle, just like my center backs would, but they're always in front of my center backs. Attacking wise, they create passing options for building up. So that's what I was saying earlier as well. As we attack this six needs to be moving and they can do give and goes with the outside and keep moving as we attack. Um, they move into space ahead of time to support the attack. Is that what I just said? Yeah. And the pass forward and dribble forward. The eight I think is next. The eight, that is this one right here. Really the only difference between six and between eight is when we drop down to defense and the opponent is in here, my six makes the fifth forward, or fifth defender, my fault. Okay? The eight will stay out. That's really the only difference. But these two more or less have the same job. This one just thinks slightly more defensively. Does that make sense to us? Okay. 
Okay. So the eight, defending they provide cover for other midfielders and work with them to make it compact and keep it compact. What that means is my six, eight, and ten, you move together in a triangle around the field like that. So you gotta stay connected and stay together to plug up the middle of the field. Because I've seen it happen way too many times. My midfielders get pulled wide, the middle of the field is open, and goals get scored like that. Okay? So those three gotta stay together. Um they help create passing options, so as they're building the attack, they're moving the attack, moving side to side to get open for the ball, create chances by supporting the attack, and they have the initiative and technical skills to dribble or pass forward. If you're playing in the midfield, you have to be able to keep the ball close to your feet, and you have to know where you're going to go with the ball before you get the ball. Because didn't we just talk about this like yesterday at practice? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any questions so far? The 10. This is attacking zone or midfielder. The, really, the only difference between 10 and 8 is when all of my forwards are up here in the attack, my 10 makes the fourth forward. And then my 8 hangs, up, hangs out back here. But these two really have more or less similar jobs. Um, attacking for the 10, create passing options and building up, uh, create chances by supporting the attack, and they can dribble pass forward and shoot. Did you notice it lists attacking first for them? Mm -hmm. Why? Because they're, they're attacking. attacking. Good, so we've switched now from more defensive things to attacking things. So if you play the 10, should I ever see you all the way back here? No. Unless it's a corner kick, you should never be all the way back there. Should my 8 ever be all the way back here? No, not really. Probably not, unless you're really overloading the box. So these two think a little more offensively than defensively. Uh, defending for the 10, they help defend in the center of the field. So these two, see how these three kind of make a triangle right here? Yeah. As you move, that's what it should look like throughout the entire field. So these three got to stay connected and have to stay together. Any questions about midfield positions? No? Beautiful. 7 and 11. My wings spread out to create passing options and building up. So just like the outside backs, this is your area. When you get pinched in here and my 9 gets the ball, who are they going to pass to? What is 9. They're not. They're not going to be able to pass anybody. So my 7-11, you got to stay nice and wide so we have options on the outside. Um, they're able to move the ball forward by shooting, passing, and dribbling. And then defensively, they prevent the opponent from building up on the wide area. So if my 7 loses the ball here, they need to get it back as quick as they can so we can have another scoring opportunity. And should they get past them, and this opponent passes a 7 and dribbles down to my 2, should the 7 stay up here and watch? Mm -hmm. No, you're tracking back, so when my two gets the ball, you're the drop option, and then we can go the other way. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. Beautiful, lovely. Nine, center forward, score goals, that is your main job. Um, spread out, they provide depth vertically, okay? So what that means is if my six has the ball and is dribbling up, my nine better be pushing, 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 pushing. So instead of spreading the field this way, my nine needs to think of spreading the field this way. Does that make sense to us? Yeah. Lovely. Um, they keep and protect the ball higher up the field, um, especially right here in the middle of the nine loses the ball. They need to be working as quickly as they can, probably along with the 10 to get it back so we can score quicker. Um, they create passing options by supporting the attack with varied runs to get behind the opponent's back line. So what that means is if the 11 has the ball here, the nine is going to wait. Don't be off sides. Stay on sides. But as soon as they kick the ball, the nines into the goal is what they're saying now with that one. And defensively, they're the first line of defense in preventing the opponent from building up. Because ideally my nine, or arguably my ten, are the highest people up the field. So the second we lose the ball, who's our first person to get it back and gives us a chance to score? Nine or ten. Nine or ten. Good. All right, that is all of the positions. Do we have any questions? Okay, this is probably one of the last times this season we're going to go over it like this. Um, and you need to know every single number. Okay, I know Isaiah really only wants to play five. But if I tell him nine and he looks at me and goes, I don't know what the nine is, I will tell you go sit back down. Okay, so make sure you know all of these and all the things I need to do. Sound good? You're just making up what you're saying. <laughs> all right, next one. So... What this is right here is it lists the qualities of every single position. So, for example, my wingers, you need to be very fit. You have a high work rate. You don't give up. You can make long runs, strong one be ones You can provide crosses in from the flanks, long range shooting, okay? So if you're like, oh, okay, I really want to play center back, these are the things you have to be able to do. Or if you're like, hmm, I don't know, center midfielder sounds great. These are the things you need to do. 
Okay. Um, I'm going to send this out so you guys will have it, but if you really want to play in a position, these are the things Coach Shondi and I look for when we put you in a position. Does this make sense for us? Okay. Next one. All right. Our formation. Here we go. Oh, four, three, three. 3 This is what we're going to play. Um, formations are always from the back to the front, so you have four defenders, three midfielders, three forwards. I'm sure most of us, this is what we played probably for the most part in 11 v 11. No? What did you play? Do you know? 4 2 4. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. 4 right? 2 4. Okay. 4 4 2. So I kind of have a slight variation of that. This is a 4 2 3 1. So I have four defenders, my two midfielders. The only difference between a 4 3 3 and a 4 2 3 1 is my 7 and 11 drop back. So, like these would be like my three forwards now, and my nine stays really, really, really high. Sure. Um, kind of. We would probably use this if their defensive line is pushing really hard on us, keep someone up just a little bit higher. Um, or if they're sitting really far back, you could go either way. But the only difference is my 7 and 11 stay in line with the 10 instead of us staying in line with the 9. Does that difference make sense to us? Yeah. yeah. Lovely. And then the last one is a 4 4 2 diamond. Um, this one we would probably only do if we are getting really hard and high press, meaning their attack just is not letting up and we got to drop somebody a little bit more. So the four forwards, the only difference here is my nine comes back now. So instead of having three in the midfield, I now have four to try and plug this up. Ideally, if we go to this, our focus has shifted from trying to score and more or less trying to prevent the opponent from scoring. Another thing I've done before is a 4-4-2, but not in the diamond. And what that means is you have four defenders. It'd be like 10, 9, 6, and 8. And you'd make another row of four and then two. So you just split from the diamond and make a line. And again, that's if we're more or less trying to prevent them from scoring more goals and we kind of stop focusing on attacking at that point. Does that make sense to us? Okay, this will rarely happen. I've been coaching for a year and I've only had to do it once. So rarely, rarely happens. Damon. If we actually do have to do that, will we focus instead of on goals, will we focus on more like possession? Yes, so if we had to flip to a 4-4-2 diamond or just a plain 4-4-2, um, obviously if we have the chance to score, go score. That's what you need to do. Um, but yeah, your focus is more of get the ball away from them as quick as possible and get it out of our hat. Because, again, like I said, if we're doing this, like, they're just in our half constantly. We can't even get out of our own half. Does that make sense to you? Perfect. Any other questions? Good questions. Perfect. We're going to prove right along. All right. Set pieces. So, we are blue. The opponent is red. What color are we? Blue. 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 Good. So, offense, meaning we have the ball. Here is what has to, has to, has to, has to happen on goal kicks. This is the goalie. My goalie does goal kicks. Okay? That is part of the goalie's job. So if you're like, hmm, goalie kind of sounds interesting, like someone other than Colton, um, if you can't do a goal kick, you can't play goalie. Okay? That's the goalie's job. So they'll always, always, always do goal kicks. My two and my three, this is called wide and deep. Okay? So if you hear me screaming like a crazy lady, get wide and deep, wide and deep, you get wide and you get deep. This is, well, why do you think this is because before I just tell you? Who can tell me? Why? Isaiah. For outside passes. Good. So if Colton decides to pass to one of them, great. But what is this picture showing? Because that's not what this picture is showing. But that does happen, and that's what I want to happen. What is this showing, though, Damon? If it gets to like the nine or something, because they're pretty open right now, and they give it to one of the wings, the defenders are there to cover. Okay. Carter. It draws the seven and eleven. You're drawing the opponents out of the attack. I'm just pulling them back, so when we send this ball up, there's two less people we have to worry about. So this just really tries to pull them out. Um, my four and my five, you're kind of in the middle in line with the 18, ready for a pass. Um, hopefully my goalkeeper will read the situation, because if their nine is camped out right here, are these two a very good option? No. More than likely not. Okay, but they just kind of stay here in case the goal kick is bad and it goes short. Um, my six, you kind of stay where you are. And then this is kind of a rough estimate where to stand. I think, have most of us played with Colton and seen his goal kicks? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so we know how far he can kick. So you need to basically go as high up as he can kick the 
the ball, my 9, 11, and 7. Now, why is my 9, 11, and 7, why are they right here like this? Why do they have to be there for? Not off sides. Not off sides. Good. You have to stay on sides. And then my 8 and my 10 have spread out a little bit wider because on offense, what do you want to do? Spread out. Any questions about this? Are we talking about when Colton kicks? Are we talking about goal kicks or punting? Goal kicks. It's goal kicks. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, this is off a goal kick. But on a punt, it would more or less look the same. I just have my two and my three go up. But it would more or less look the same. And do you see how they're all spread away from the red people? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you hear me screaming, get away from the opponent, get a whatever color it may be, you need to get as far away from them as you can. So should you just be standing still like this waiting for the ball? No. No, you need to move. All right, let's do goal kicks defense now. Defensively, so the opponent has the ball. Now their goalie has it in their goal box. Here is what I need. I need my 7, 10, 9, and 11 marking their defenders. Okay? You are the closest to the goal because I've seen it happen before. Their goalie doesn't have the greatest goal kicks, and we get the ball right in front of the goal. So you need to be marking them. If the two and the three, if there are two and three go deep, just keep an eye on them. You don't have to necessarily touch them because you can close them down if they pass it there. Um, my eight needs to mark their six. My six will kind of hold in the middle of the field where they can even slide up to the ten here. My two and my three are on the seven and eleven. Okay. My four and my five are kind of offset. Now in this example, my six could go higher, my four could press a little higher, my five could go on my nine. Um, but you also need to be physically touching them. Okay, Damon can hear me in my example. Okay, just stand and face the ground. Perfect. This, is this going to work? No. no. Is this going to work? No. This is what you have to do. You have yeah. to physically touch them when you mark up. Okay? Touch the girls. <laughs> yes, I don't care if they I don't care if they're a boy. I don't care if they're a girl. I, I don't care. You touch them. Why do we touch them when we defend? And you're going to hear me screaming it from the sidelines. So why is it so important? Hey, Dan. It's hard for them to get the ball. It's hard for them to get the ball, right? When I'm on you, holding your hand, basically, and you get the ball, do you have anywhere to go very quickly? No. No, we don't want to give them space because when we give them tiny space, what happens? They, they score. Pass them. They score. Or they pass it. We don't want to hear those. So any questions about defending? It's pretty simple. You more or less just line up with the opponent that plays in the similar space as you. Pretty much how it goes. Throw-ins. So, my three is taking the throw-in here because who always takes the throw-in? Three yeah, outside backs. Outside backs. Outside backs. <coughs> I never want to see anybody else ever picking up the ball unless you're an outside back. Um. So, my five, my four, and my two. Do you see how they shifted? Yeah. This is very, 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 very important because my five needs to shift, because if this seven isn't paying attention, they go up here, who is wide open? The five. five. The five, because is our options always forward? No. No, you don't always have to go forward. You can go back. So my five is the drop option, then my four and my two just shift, because we haven't talked about this, but you can do something called swinging the ball through the defensive back line. So if the three threw it to the five, the four to the two, and then we just switch the field. That's why you have to be angled like this. This doesn't always happen, but that's why it's set like that. Just looks like they got one to be in a Nike swoosh. They are kind of in the Nike swoosh right now. Yes. That is that is a defensive shape. You're going to see it a lot. Um, my 6, my 8, my 10, my 9, and my 11. Who can tell me what on earth is going on with them right now? They're, Miles. They're heading towards the ball. Good. So these arrows mean running. So remember how we talked about we pull, we pull the opponent out. See how the opponent is standing by them? You see all the green space? That's what we want to have happen. We want to pull out, 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 and then right before Damon throws in the ball, they run and they check into that space, leaving the red spears out and a whole bunch of us in here. Um, my seven, they're just kind of hanging out when the throw-in is on the opposite side of that wing, just like my two. You're just kind of hanging out. You'll pinch over just a little bit, but you're not really going to be an option when it's on the opposite side. Any questions about throw-ins? Okay, my biggest pet peeve. Oh, she You're good. My biggest pet peeve on throw-ins is when kids will do this. And then they just stand there and they don't move. You are a defender's dream. I loved it when the forwards just stood there because I could just stand there and mark them. So you need to keep moving to get the ball. Because on a throw-in, 
Am I going to be very pleased if the other team touches the ball first? No. 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 So we want to touch the ball first. And also, when we do throw-ins, you want to throw the ball down. You want to throw it at your friend's feet, because what's the use to deal with? A ball at your feet or a ball at your chest? Feet. Feet. So throw it to their feet when you do a throw-in. Make sense? Lovely. Okay, now let's do defending them. All right, their three is taking the throw-in. Again, you're more or less lining up with the person that plays your position. So two is touching 11, four is touching their nine, five is touching their 10, six is touching their eight. My seven is touching their five, because see how they're outside back through it, so their center back shifted. So now my seven has to pick up that center back, because who was the seven's mark before? Your Chazzy. Who was it? Who was the seven's mark before? Three. Three, good. So now they have to pick up the five. Ten <coughs> is simply occupying space. You don't always have to mark a person. Sometimes we need to mark space. That's what the ten does here. Why do you think my three is not touching the seven, and why is my eleven not touching the two? Because they're not options. They're not right? They're not really options. And I would rather have my three pinched in a little bit more, because if this ball goes short and somehow gets through here, they're closer. Okay? If it somehow swings, you'll have plenty of time to get there. Um, but you more or less just need to look at, okay, who is in my area? What player makes sense for me to mark right now? And touch them. This does require communication from these three people right here. Okay, when we are defending a throw in, I need to hear Colton or Aldo or Israel, whoever it may be back here, saying, okay, Carter, mark up a number two. Damon, mark up a number five. You need to tell their name and you need to tell them the number they're marking up on. Because is this helpful? Mark up, go mark up on somebody. Mark up, go touch him. No. Is that helpful? No. No, because Avery's going to look at me like, mark up on who? Okay, so we need to give direction when we say things. So these three people need to be doing that. All right, I think it's corner kicks next, am I right? Aha! Yay. Corner kicks, offense. I have my four right now taking the corner kick. Ideally, it's one of my defenders that can do it. Um, because why would I not want my nine doing the corner kick before? Because they're your main scorer. Right, they're, they're my goal scorer, okay? I'd rather have one of my center backs or an outside that will run up there and do it, but we'll just kind of see how that goes. But anyways, the floor is taking the corner kick right now. Um, why is my goalie so far out? Corner kick. They can't score oh, here back there. Well, I wouldn't say can't. Because they need a drop option. Would, would it be? They would have enough time to get back. Right, they'd have enough time to get back, and if that ball comes rolling, Colton can go dribble it and put it right back up. So he doesn't need ball in the back. Why are the five there? Covering, covering, covering the nine. Making right. the nine open. Right, well, and the five, ideally, even if one of their players gets it, I would estimate at your guys' age, probably their clearances will probably only land at the half anyways. So I don't see balls going that far past the half, so we stay right here and hold at the half. That's what this is called, holding at the half. So if you hear me say hold at the half, you stand on the half line, okay? My three is a drop option for the corner kick, so they start here, check in, pull them out, check in to be a drop option. And then the rest of them, you kind of stay in your areas more or less. Now, have you guys seen where, like, they'll all line up in a line and then they like, break and they, like, run like a bunch of bees? I don't do that, okay? You just need to go to your space and keep moving, because if you stand there like this, is that very productive? No. No. Again, defender's dream. You don't want to be defender's dream right now. So 11, you'll kind of be here at the front, my 6, and then here, my 9's in the middle, my 10 is back post, 7's way far side, and 8 is here. And as soon as that ball is kicked, what do you do? Crash. Run. Crash. You go straight for that goal, crashing the ball hard. Okay? Um, does this make sense? Yes. Beautiful. Defense. All right, so their 5 is doing the corner kick. Okay, this is our goal now. Um, Colton is in the goal, and these little black things, by the way, are your head. Yeah, that's where your head is. Why is Colton's head pointed that way for? Him? So we can see the ball. ball. Right, he's going to be looking at the ball, and he's also hopefully going to be saying so and so mark up on X number. Okay, my center backs stand on the post. So if this chair is the post, you know, the upright post of the goal, this is what you look like. Okay, why? To block one side of the goal. What, Peyton Lauder? To block one side of the goal. 
to block the sides of the goal. Good, Isaiah. Make the goal smaller. Makes the goal look smaller. Okay, when you stand on the post, it makes the goal look smaller. Um, so my four and five need to be there. Whichever side the corner kick is on, either two, if that's on the right side, or three on the left side, is marking this area right here. You're kind of just in front of the post on the other side of the 18 in case their corner kick goes flat. Okay, I this was usually where I would stand a lot of times. And if you're going to stand here, do you think you might have to be prepared to take one to the face? Probably. Yes. Yeah, probably. If you stand here, good chance you're taking it right there. But you'll be okay. But you're kind of blocking that front access point right here. And then, like before, you just kind of mark up on your person. So three is marking their seven, six, their ten, eight, their nine, ten, their eight. Why is my seven marking their three, four right now? So they don't have a drop option. Good, drop option. So you got to stay on them in case they run. And then the 11 is marking the 6. Why on this earth is my 9 all the way up there for? When we are defending a court kick, Riley? Because they could drop it back to me. Me too. Who can? <coughs> they could hit the corner kick. The 9 is our team. The, the other I'm team's taking the four. corner kick right now. I'm talking about the 4. Oh, our 4? Yeah. If they clear it out. Oh, yes, good. So if we clear the ball out, my nine is up there and is waiting for that clearance. Yep. Good. Just like how when we were on offense, when the four, our four was waiting to put it back up, the nine's waiting for it to come back out. Any questions about defending a corner kick? Okay, I'm going to be very, 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 very adamant. You two stand here and you stay there until the ball leaves the ball. Okay, so if they're all in here like a bunch of crazy people trying to get the ball, you, you stay still and you put your hands behind your back and you do not put your hands up. And you just wait till the ball leaves the box to make that hole smaller. Okay? Questions? All right. Pressure, cover, balance. So, I've told you we kind of have five defenders-ish, so I'm showing you what it looks like with all of them. So, we start over here with the six. What are they saying? I got ball. Is that what you're supposed to say too? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So if you're stuck with the ball, you say, I got ball, pressure, cover, balance, extras. Does this kind of look like what we've done? Mm -hmm. More or less. If the two steps to the ball, they say, I got ball. Pressure, cover, balance. This is the swoosh. Why does the six go here? To so cover the open area that's not covered by the swoosh. Correct. So we can't just pass it straight across. Why can why should the six not go here? Why is this probably not our best option, though? There's an open space right there. There's an open space right here. We're against the sideline. Is this nine gonna go anywhere? No, probably. Yeah. Hopefully not. And if they do, if they get past the two, who's stepping next? Four. 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 The four. Good. So six got to stay this way. Any questions about how this looks? Okay. If the four and five step to the ball, they go, I got ball. Okay, pressure, cover, balance, extra, extra. Because why are they here now? Why were they not there when the two was stepping, but why are they all of a sudden here now when the four is stepping? Through balls. Through balls, yeah. What else? Connor, do you have an idea? You're scratching your head. Yeah. Keegan. So they don't get like in between the four and five? Yeah, pull up this middle between the four and five. Good. Isaiah? So nobody can run through and get the ball. Yeah, so no one can run through. Anything else? Where does the six play? The outside the of the field or the middle of the field? Middle. The middle. So when the ball's in the middle, they become part of this. When the ball's on the outside, do they need to be part of it? No. 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 So that's why they're here now, in addition to flooding the middle. Yes, but they are a central player. So in the four steps, they come in, fall in line to make that fifth defender. And do you see our NIP swoosh with all of them now? Beautiful, lovely. Uh, the five steps, pretty similar. I've drawn it just a little bit differently for you. The six could slide here, or maybe there's a player here and they're marking them, but five steps, pressure. Uh, pressure cover balance, kind of extras, Nike switch. So there's kind of two ways the six can go. Do we see the two ways the six can kind of go? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And a lot of this is very situational, right? I mean, yeah, we have our fancy little triangles and I place them exactly where I want on the field, but is that how it actually works? Oh. Nope. No. No, this is just to give you an idea of what I want. But on the field, if there's a player that's like right here or really close to the ball, the six just needs to go there. 
okay? But I do want to see this shape, okay? My defenders, you need to have this shape. We need to do our knife knee switch, okay? Questions? Beautiful. Last but not least is the three steps. Again, pressure, cover, balance, extra. Why are they hanging out here again? To cover the open space. So cover open space, because why do they not need to be in here? Because they have them over there. The fact that they're they're tall on the outside. Yeah, it's also not the middle of the field. Yeah, it's not the middle of the field, it's not their job. Okay? Um, when you are in your position, you need to do your job. Now, let's say my three got caught sleeping and they're still all the way back here. Who should step? Uh, Good, the five, and then the three better get back here. So you can switch spots if somebody's maybe caught sleeping or they're down or something, whatever may happen. You can switch spots, but you need to know where you're at on the field and what your job is. Because I see it happen all too often. I'll have a four who maybe doesn't trust our three, and they'll run all the way over here. I have two people on the ball. Uh-oh. Is this going to be good for us? No. 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 So you have to stay in your position. You have to stay in our formation, especially when we're defending. Okay. Any questions about that? Beautiful. Next. Kicks, uh, direct and indirect. Um, this is just when we are defending them because offensively it'll be just like a corner kick. Get as close as you can to the goal without being offside. Mm -hmm. Right? Pay some Um, So when we are doing defending a kick, um, my 8, 9, and 10 need to make a wall in front of the ball. You have to be 10 yards back. You've seen the whole ref where they count the 10 steps. Okay, you got to be 10 yards back. Do not come right here and jump right in front of the ball. Why do you not do that? Yellow card. You get a yellow card for doing that. Okay, so when you make your wall, make sure you're about 10 yards back. Because if you come stand right in front of it, very obviously they'll give you a yellow card. So those three need to be here. Then, kind of like we've been saying, you just... Mark up on the person that you're supposed to. Two gets their 11, four is their nine, five is their 10, three is their seven, six is their six. Why are uh, 11 on eight? Why is seven here not there? Because they can't really pass the three. Yeah. Right? I mean, and even if they do, it's easier to go forwards than to go backwards. So I'd rather have you closer to our goal protecting it than worrying about Smo Joe over here who's probably not even going to get the ball. Okay? Also, there's something kind of special about where I have placed my blue triangles. Aside from two always marks 11, there's something else to this. What else is there to this? Looks like a pyramid. Yeah, it does look like a pyramid. Even if it's a guess. I'm fine with guessing. It doesn't have to be right. No way. Better for defense. It is better for defense. Why? 4-3-3. Well, it is. We are playing a 4-3-3 in this. Yes, that is correct. Isaiah? You what? We have a person who's open. We do have a person who's open. Yeah. Who's heard of Markup Bullside? Um, heard of oh, it. the... Who's heard, mark up on them goal side, get goal side? Oh, Who's heard of that? Raise your hand. I don't know what it means. Okay, so this is important to talk about then. When you mark up defensively, you want to be goal side. What that means is you are between them and the goal. So my four is between the nine and the goal. Because if they were on this side, would they be between them and the goal? No. No. David, come stand back over again. <laughs> Pretend this screen is the goal. Face that way and take a close step forward, okay? I want you here. What am I between right now? The goal, the goal and, the and the Him and the goal. Good. And if he was facing face that way, should I come on this side of him? No. no. What am I defending at this point? Nothing. Nothing. I'm like, honestly, on this side of you, so when you run to the goal, you have nothing to run through. You want to think, make them run through you. Get between them and the goal. What is that called? Who said it? Goal side. Mark up goal side. Get goal side. Okay? So you need to get between what and what? The, the player and the goal. goal. Them and the goal. Good. Do we see that now? Yeah. How I placed my triangles? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Lovely. Any questions about kicks? Okay, just really the most important thing is touch them, three in a wall. 
That's what I care about. Okay. Next. Ah. Here are all the phrases you are going to hear me say over and over and over and over and over again. The three P's, pressure, position, patience. These are the three P's of defending. Pressure is stepping to the ball, because if we move slowly to go step to the ball and pressure them, is that ever going to work? No. No, because no, the more time you give them, what happens? The more the space is they The more goals they score. Good. So we need to apply pressure quickly. Position. Direct the opponent to the outside to away from our goal. Didn't we talk about this with our defensive stance and how you angle your body? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's your position. So pressure, little steps, get close to them, find your position. And then patience, stay in front and no diving. Okay? Because as long as Avery's in front of them, can they score? Probably not. Probably not. Can I kick a ball through you? If they go to the side of you. Yeah. Through you. Uh, through the middle of you. Between the lines. No. You, no one can ever kick a ball through you. So if you are right in front of them, can they score? No. No. It's not always about taking the ball. It's about staying in front and having patience. Because the longer you sit in front of them, the more nervous that board's going to get. And they're going to mess up. And when they mess up, that's when we take the ball. So that is the three P's of defending. Pressure, cover, balance. When someone snaps, they always right back up behind and beside the player stepping. We've talked about this, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just a couple times here. A little bit. Mark up. Step to the player closest to you and touch them. Okay, you heard me screaming like a crazy lady at the scrimmage. Touch them. Because that is the expectation. You need to touch them. It is obviously easier to go forwards and try to go backwards or chase the opponent. Okay, so you need to think about where you're standing on the field, where the ball is, how the game is moving. And always remember, it's easier to go forward to them than let them be camping out behind you and try and play chase. Playing chase is not a fun game. It's not a game we want to play. So what is it? It's easier to go forward, forward. and backward. And back. Good. Want the ball. If you want the ball, you have to move into open space, step in front of the opponent, and demand the ball. Have we heard me say this too? Yes. Yes. Okay. You have to want the ball. A lot of times, um, that's actually going to be one of our goals for games, is wanting the ball. Wanting the ball is, like this says, moving to open space, asking for the ball, winning, 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 winning. Winning 50-50 balls out of the air. If you don't want the ball, do you want to play? No. 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 Okay, so you have to want the ball if you want to play. Uh, never stop. Unless you hear a whistle, a keeper has the ball in their hands, or the ball is clearly out of play, or the ball is in the back of the net. I don't care. Well, okay, I do care if someone on our team gets hurt. Okay, I do care about that. But can we stop because they're on the ground? No. No, no you have to keep going, okay? And if the other team clearly handballs the ball, should you stand there and go, oh, ref, handball, ref, ref? No. 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 You keep going. You don't stop unless one of these things happens. I have seen players stop before in similar situations and then we get scored. So you don't stop unless it's a whistle, out of bounds, keeper has it, or the ball's in the back of the net. Other than that, are we going to stop? No. No, lovely. Communicate. Um, you have to do it, okay? Without it, you can't expect your teammates to be your best. Everyone's always talking, communicating, no matter if we have possession or not, okay? The more you talk, the better we're going to do. Because when we talk, we're all on the same page. And I need 11 people on the field connected and talking, not three forwards doing their own thing and two defenders doing their own thing and two defenders not knowing what's going on. Do you think that's going to work well? No. No, but if we just talk and communicate with each other, whether it's saying, I got ball, I step, or here, I'm open, or hey, mark up on them, or hey, watch your shoulder. You need to help each other know what's going on. So communication is going to be a big thing. Next is 360. You always need to know who and what is around you. And remember, the best options are they always in front of you. No, no I have seen that happen so many times as kids just want to go forward, 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 forward. But if my center back is wide open back here, what do you think I'd rather us do? Try and blast it through the opponent or pass it back and keep possession? Because if we have the ball, who can score? Us. And they can't. So focus more on keeping possession. Um, check your shoulder. Know where your teammates and the opponent are, especially if you're dribbling. You need to know what's going on around you because am I going to be too pleased if you go dribble, dribble, bonk right into the other team? No, because that tells me you don't know what's going on around you. So just know everything going around you at all 